Eso es lo que usted come. Sí. Eso es. Sí. President and I discussed a fundamental belief that most people don't want to leave home. There are really poor people in the U.S., but poverty in Guatemala is a level of poverty that I think not a lot of Americans are familiar with. Ya no es solo la cuestión de la pobreza, pobreza extrema. Hablamos ya de un cambio climático, de una saturación de los suelos. Si juntamos esos problemas económicos, sociales, con la parte climatológica, esto se va a venir a una situación muy pesimista que nos asusta. Millions are going hungry in Guatemala. A third of the country depends on agriculture, and climate change is destroying the soil. Those who can risk it all to escape. Hundreds of thousands of people are risking their lives to get all the way to the U.S. border and being turned away. It is certainly a crisis. As droughts and torrential rains intensify in Guatemala, those most vulnerable to the crisis are already in precarious conditions. Es poca comida que tenemos para los niños. For many, the clock is ticking, and eventually they're forced to choose between starvation and migration. We're in Chiquimula, southern Guatemala. These lands sit right on what's known as the Dry Corridor, a region notorious for its extended droughts. So even though the fields seem lush and fertile from high above, from the ground, it all looks much different. What's the problem with this? This is not a normal area. normal is, as someone says, it's a little bit that still wants to get out. The rain didn't come. No vino la lluvia. Jose rents about 1.5 acres of land. Years ago, he was able to make a living and feed his family with corn that he grew, but not anymore. How is that impacting your family? No sé, lamentablemente, este, este año como que nos ha querido dejar sin comida. Pensando dónde va a poder trabajar para poder traer el pan para los hijos. Uh -huh. Para ir sosteniéndolo esta miseria, lo que todavía no salió. El miedo es de que, que de que no va a haber comida y la familia no no hay, no alcanza. So how long do you think this food will last you for? So, so you have two days worth of food. What's what's next after that? Después tengo que ir a buscar más para otros dos días. So it's a constant hunt for food. Ah, sí. Tiene que buscar mi esposo para que comen los niños. Ajá, él sí. Hay cambios en la distribución temporal de la lluvia en Guatemala y hay prácticamente un grado más de temperatura comparado con la climatología que, que existía en 1960, por ejemplo. Las emisiones de los países industrializados nos han modificado esa temperatura de la atmósfera y hemos sido pues, víctimas de estos eventos que cada vez son más recurrentes. Hablamos sequías prolongadas, tormentas, huracanes. Esperaríamos poder adaptarnos, pero es muy complicado. Eh, estas personas necesitan recursos, necesitan conocimiento, necesitan que se les hable del clima, necesitan aplicar una agricultura inteligente, principalmente a las personas que, que utilizan el suelo para sus cultivos y para su abastecimiento personal, generando una inseguridad alimentaria increíble. This is Ubalda. She's a mother of three who lives just about an hour away from Jose and his family. She also depends on her small piece of land to feed her children, and with less food every day, her 15-month-old baby is not doing too well. What is your biggest fear as it relates to your baby? Ella se puede morir, va, que está así de desnutrición. En ese peligro es que está.
Once a month, Ubaldo joins a group of mothers and their children who walk for miles to the nearest clinic. Their babies have been diagnosed with chronic malnutrition. Here, a couple of government employees do their best to monitor their conditions. El peso promedio de, de un niño para que esté en óptimas condiciones eh, debería de ser más o menos 17 libras al, al cumplir un año de edad. Por lo regular acá lo que nosotros podemos observar es que los niños están tanto bajos de peso como también bajo de, de talla ideales. What's her weight? How much did she weigh? 13 libras con 8 onzas. Según peso de edad, está en riesgo en caer en una desnutrición aguda moderada. And far from being the exception, this is the norm in Guatemala. The country ranks highest in cases of chronic malnutrition in Latin America, with almost 50% of all children under the age of five suffering from it. Eh, tratamos de, de hacer lo mejor que se puede. Realmente, it's very sad for me. Very, very sad. A few pounds of rice and basic hygiene products will hold Ubalda's family together for about a month. She says that if she could, she would go to America. Extreme poverty is among the top drivers of irregular migration in Guatemala, with almost 60% of the country living under the poverty line. In 2021, encounters with migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border reached their highest levels on record, with almost 280,000 Guatemalans either apprehended or deported. Our entire legal structure to regulate migration is dependent on an individual having an individual purpose. You got a job, you need an employment visa. You have your parents live in the United States, you get a family visa. You can convince a consular officer that you face a credible threat of violent persecution, you might get asylum. But there's no way that an individual can ever say, I'm a climate migrant, and back that up with evidence. Poverty and food insecurity are as prevalent in northern Guatemala as they are in the south. But being closer to the Mexican border offers a more feasible path to the U.S. for those hoping to escape famine and provide for their families. People who are moving from Guatemala to some degree are, are less and less people who are investing for the future, uh, bringing their children with them to establish a better life uh, permanently and more and more dealing with crisis. That's the kind of movement that you get when uh, just the male breadwinner goes to work uh, as, as much as he can, maybe for a short period, to get the, the family through a crisis and then, then per perhaps come back after a while. It's a sign of uh, crisis, it's a sign of desperation. <laughs> Like in southern Guatemala, the government scrambles to get his family some food just to hold them together for a little longer. 
as far as the Biden administration, it's preparing to take action too. With the White House immigration strategy being tested every day by a crush of arriving migrants, Vice President Kamala Harris tonight is 1,500 miles from the border in Central America, wanting to slow the tide of U.S.-bound migrants where it starts. Kamala Harris, in May, she gave a, a speech about what was going to be done with the administration's new package of, of $310 million additional dollars in aid for the Northern Triangle which includes uh, uh, $54 million of additional new aid just for Guatemala, focused on helping with extreme food insecurity. Internamente, el guatemalteco, todo guatemalteco es optimista, es alegre, siempre espera lo mejor. Yo creo que los latinos somos así. Cuando empezamos a ver datos, nos asustamos. Tenemos que pensar que siempre vamos a encontrar una solución. We are witnessing the effects of extreme weather on a global scale. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says these effects are irreversible. While developed countries are usually more likely to adapt to changing weather conditions, underdeveloped nations like Guatemala need the international aid. It's money that can be the difference between life and death. But Guatemalans don't have a choice. They have to keep going. They have to find a way to survive for the sake of their family. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.